who among us can deny the well-ordered beauty of things above us? about us in this world of ours, in lavish profusion, are forms and textures and colors that give all of us deep, inspiring pleasure. It may be only a single curve, or yet a simple pattern of light and shade. It may be a riot of color, or yet one hue. But if it pleases, if it satisfies, we call it beautiful, whether it be the work of man, or the work of nature. Man has always found beauty in the graceful forms and flowing curves established by forces beyond their control. For our appreciation of the beautiful springs from deep within us. Our sense of beauty is innate, inherent, inherited. We instinctively like the sleek look of the jet plane for although it was designed specifically for speed, the very design that gives it speed gives it also beauty. Beauty of form and beauty of line. But close your eyes and beauty is gone. For beauty does not exist of itself. Beauty is not a quality like hardness or softness. No, beauty exists only through the eyes of those who see it. And yet, while it is given to every one of us to recognize and delight in beauty, it is given to few of us to create beauty. The ability to create the pleasing combinations of form and line and color we all consider beautiful. Such is the ability of the artist. Such also is the ability of the modern industrial stylist. For in a sense, he is an artist. Yet, where other artists are content merely to imitate, the stylist has the bold courage to create. Where many of the rest of us are content merely to master a craft, the stylist has the limitless imagination, the creative inspiration to project his artistry into the design of the future, and thereby promote it. For the industrial stylist, the automobile stylist, is a product of his times a product of the speed and motion, of the youthful energy, of the boundless ambition and new horizons of the 20th century. And a product of the tough, rough competition of 20th century industry. The crushing weight of this competition squeezes out the second-rate design, for there's room at the top of the heap only for the best. And because the stylist of today is designing for a mass market, he must be attuned to the pulse of that market, a market that's counted in customers by the tens of millions. So his is a field of artistic expression that must surge ahead of his competition, go far beyond the artistry of yesterday without ever violating its basic principles. For the public taste is based on those principles. Thus, the only yardstick for measuring the success of styling is its success in the marketplace. Styling that sells is, in the last analysis, styling that succeeds. Call it what you may, call it good taste or call it fancier names, the quality of styling that makes for its success is eye appeal. Eye appeal may take many forms, but always it is the sum total of the whole. Yet no detail is too small to escape the attention of the truly capable stylist, whose special abilities lie in the knack of pleasing most of the people 
most of the time. It may express itself in the design woven into a piece of cloth that appeals to the sense of sight. And artfully given texture to add a subtly irresistible appeal to the sense of touch. It may be the finish applied to a new interior trim that imparts appealing warmth to an otherwise cold material. It may be a single sweeping curve that somehow is right. Right because people like it, like it enough to want it. It may be the general outline of the whole mass that somehow suggests dependability or graceful elegance or sweeping speed. And yet the stylist must be practical as well as artistic, cost conscious as well as beauty wise. He knows that to succeed, the product must be good with the inherent goodness that comes from good research, good engineering, good production, good sales and promotion, and good management as well as good design. For the working stylist recognizes that he is but one member of a winning team whose string of victories in the battle for sales comes from the sum total of all the varied skills that make the winning product. But because he knows that the industrial woods are littered with otherwise splendid products that failed, simply because they failed to attract the public eye, he considers vital his job of packaging the product, of wrapping the goods so it will be beautiful to behold and desirable to own. Yet he must create all the beauty of form and line and color, the eye appeal that sells his company's product within such sharp exacting limitations as four wheels, road clearance, overall length, headroom, and a host of other practical restrictions on his creative imagination. And the tools of his trade are as mundane as its restrictions. With a piece of blank paper, a trained mind, and such things as pencil, brush, and paint, he must dream up the fresh ideas that can be modeled into a three-dimensional expression of his artistic sense. And with such ordinary products as textured cloth and lustrous leather and gleaming plastic, repeat his mental patterns to produce luxurious beauty along with human comfort. Eventually transforming cold steel into the gleaming eye arresting beauty of the modern automobile. What manner of man is he then, this stylist? Fundamentally, he is at heart an artist, the seed, the spark, the indefinable inspiration to create rested within him when he was born. His desire to design inevitably blossomed with his intelligence. His were the toys of motion. His were the hobbies of self-expression. His nimble mind at first leaped ahead of his stubby fingers. Instead of tales of romance and blood and thunder, Mechanics and science became his prose and his poetry. He built, designed, created things because for reasons he could not tell, he was unsatisfied with things at hand. The chances are he tackled tougher tasks even though the sweep of his ideas may have been broader than the skill of his hands. And from the world around him, he began to draw his inspiration. The poetry of motion began to capture his attention. In his fertile mind, the forms, the curves, the shape of things about him fed the growing flame of his imagination. And conscious of the need within him, he may have enrolled in a school of design to learn its special language, learning and practicing as he went. Intensive training seemed only to whet his imagination. Monotonous practice seemed only to sharpen the keen edge of his inspiration. Finally, eventually, the born automobile stylist winds up designing automobiles.
finally, eventually, nothing else will satisfy him. Inevitably, he has a special quirk of mind, a sort of sixth sense, an instinct, that shows him the look of things people will like, not only today, but tomorrow as well. For behind him, the experienced stylist has left the dogma and ritual of artistic formalism. Behind him, he has left the pallid patterns of the past and given wing to a creative imagination that soars off into the blue of tomorrow, while the rest of us are enjoying his design for today. The stylist is a perfectionist, perpetually dissatisfied with the design he has just created. For already on his drawing board, or in his mind, are the images of the more beautiful, far better things on the way. In his never-ending search for perfection, the true stylist discards more ideas than he proposes, rejects as unsatisfactory designs that often appear as the final product of others. Left to himself, his mind refuses to rest. Ideas flow through his fingertips, out of nowhere, into reality. Actually, this is a process of apparently aimless thinking on paper. And from it, he and his brother stylists, when left to themselves, may turn out a design of the future, of no apparent practical value today. Yet, a turn of its fender, or a curve of its body, may be the solution to a knotty problem of design that's just around the corner. The stylist can no more help this thinking on paper than he can help breathing. While the minds of the rest of us may be fettered to the past or present, his thoughts wing on. He does not claim to know the look of things 20 years from now, but he likes to imagine on paper how they might look. And from the composite of his expert imaginings come trends and basically sound ideas that can be adapted and adjusted to improve the look of things today. Where does he get his ideas? The stylist himself can't tell you. But if you could look inside his mind, you'd probably see a moving mass of form and color, shapes and curves, inspired by his subconscious reaction to the things he himself has seen and felt and dreamed throughout his life. And so it is that when a team of skillful stylists is given a specific problem, the flying fingers of their minds soon dredge out of their dreams a score of answers to lay before the good taste of management for final selection. Is it a grill to give a new look? Instead of one, there'll be a dozen to choose from. Is it an embellished port to give eye appeal to what essentially is just a round hole? The stylist will come up with a choice of 20, 30, or 40. And even while the choice is being made, the stylist is busily dreaming up still more. Men there are who would call the automobile stylist a dreamer, and dreamer he may be, if it is from dreams that 50 million cars can come and if it is from dreams that sales leadership can come. Dreamer he is then, with the courage to elaborate and improve on the past, to leap ahead of his soaring dreams and prove their worth in the rolling crucible of laboratory design, young in heart and young in mind, with the will to meet and beat the youthful competition of the world of his times. modern industrial stylist has the artistic temerity to believe that the look of things to come is only vaguely predicted by the look of things today, that shapes and forms of beauty undreamed of now will be in production tomorrow. Yet it is given to him among men to know that the pioneering path he will tread is even so well ordered. 
For deep within him is awareness that forces of nature give things of nature the look they have, and that they conform to the dictates of immutable laws of styling that give grace and beauty none can deny. So came the sleek look of the jet plane. So will come the look of all things touched by the hand of the stylist.